Let me try this again. Welcome, welcome to the list of football. Um, United Talk, uh, the first show of its kind on the channel. Um, obviously, on Monday, um, we were doing the Monday football um, uh, chat podcast, and it was actually our seventh podcast. And, you know, um, if you guys want to check that out, you know, you can always um, go on my timeline here on Facebook. And, and yeah, and, and, and just see the show for yourselves. Um, it was a very um, informative show. I could, we, we, we actually went in depth in discussion with a lot of um, games that took place uh, last week in terms of La Liga, Premier League, and so on and so on. So um, this show is actually like, um, this show that I'm presenting today is like, uh, it's a United-based show, like we everything Man United. Obviously, um, United didn't play last week, um, and we've, we've decided to have a, a separate show away from the Monday podcast where we were focusing on teams as a collective. So um, mainly today, what we'll be looking at, you know, it's three points to be exact. And the first point is that um, one of the topics we'll be covering today with regards to Man United is um, the managerial option between Ten Hag and Pochettino. Man United's top four chances and what the club needs to do to change going forward because those are the most important factors for the for the football club and the team that we support and you know i'm still waiting for um i'm still wait, i'm still waiting for for um sims to come through um he's a uh, he's a little bit too late but um i'm just i'm just gonna go straight to it you know um Ten Hag or Pochettino for me. Um, <sighs> Ten Hag. You know, um, it's obvious. Like, like Ten Hag is 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 um is a manager on the up. That's what I feel. You know, he's a he's a manager who's on his way up, who's got good cred uh, credentials, who plays expensive football, who knows how to uh to like basically combine youth and experienced players. So he, he fits the mold of what Man United is all about and what Sir Alex represented. But, you know, this is, isn't about Sir Alex Ferguson. This, is, this isn't about him and the history that he achieved at Man United. But this is solely about us going in a different direction, but yet have, um, still be ambish, an ambitious club. Um, Pochettino is not, I'm not to saying, you know, I know a lot of people have been bashing Pochettino, you know, I, I was on the Saeed TV, um, calling show yesterday, last night, and, you know, I was hearing people bashing Pochettino, you know, um, you know, fair enough, everyone has their point of view as to who Pochettino is and what he has achieved prior to this, but, Pochettino is actually a good manager. He's just not a good manager um, at, the, at this point in time for us. You know, he's not meant for us. He, he would not fit here. Maybe Pochettino would have fitted. Like, I made this point last night that Pochettino, could, Pochettino was the right manager for us two years ago. Two years ago, we were all asking for Pochettino to come to Man United, and the board just, they choked. They fumbled it. So Pochettino ended up going to PSG. And, you know, it is what it is with, with you know, we have a reckless board. Um, we have a reckless board. P these guys don't know what they're doing. Like, I always keep coming on to the show, saying the same things. You know, it shows the incompetence. It shows the incompetence above because if you can't see you know, that you guys are, are making the same mistakes over and over and over again, then clearly you know that you're not doing what, what you're supposed to be doing. So if these guys, even with Ten Hag, listen, this is, this people re think that this is a managerial problem at Man United. Managerial problem is this is only the mere 
it's only a small thing compared to what is really a prob- the biggest problem at the football club. And the, you know what the biggest problem at the football club is? The structure at the football club. So now, nowadays, fans are very, very informant. Like, they're very informed in terms of um, what happens behind the scenes and how football clubs are run and what is required to be able to run football clubs successfully. We don't have that. We don't have that at Man United. We don't have any of that. And it's been detrimental to our success. You cannot take short corners to get to be successful. People say Chelsea took, took a short corner. Man City took short, short cuts. They didn't. Yes, in terms of expenditure, they did. And to close the gap very quickly, they did. It, you would consider that a short cut. But they actually employed people who knew what they were doing. They separated commercial um, aspects of the business and the footballing side of the business. You cannot afford to have the two interchanging. You can't. You have to learn to separate both of them. You need to have people who are in charge of the commercial side. You need to have people who are making footballing decisions in terms of recruitment, in terms of who's who you letting go, in terms of contractual and uh, negotiations on who should be um, whose contract should be extended, whose contract we should just let run, who we should sell because their contracts are running at at at, at so and so years. You get what I'm saying, like. You have to be informed nowadays. Like you need football people in football making footballing decisions. These bankers don't make those decisions well. People think that bankers should know things about contracts and whatnot. Football is a whole entire spectrum. It's a whole entire spectrum. You you cannot have business people. Business people are gonna have problems in in terms of football. If you put businessmen making football in decision, you're in trouble as a football club. You, you're done. You, like you, you really are headed to, a, to a, a huge fall of disaster. And that's what's been happening at this football. I don't know who advises these guys. I really don't know who advises these guys because, you know, people think it's easy. It's easy. Just, you're just going to hire a manager and the football and Man United will be back. There is no way in hell. I'm not even optimistic about, I know Ten Hag is a great manager. Ten Hag is a great manager, no doubt about that. You know, he fits us like a glove. But what's the point of getting these managers through the door if there's no structure, there's no support system behind them? What are they working with? There's no one who can be successful without any proper structures and procedures in place to allow them to be successful in whatever they're doing. In any company, in any spectrum, in anything that you do, you need that support system. That's what makes a... That's the difference between something being successful and not being successful. So the balance in this team needs to be back. The balance in this club needs to be back. And we can all sit here and say, we want this manager, we want that manager. It's a circus. It's always going to be a circus. This, this is what, what, what's been happening for the last 10 years at this football club. They bring in a manager. He gets a couple of months. He can't bring, um, he doesn't get his targets. Um, because obviously, as I said, there's no footballing people there who are able to, you know, um, make footballing decisions. So the contractual agree, uh, negotiations go slow. We can't bring players through quick, quick enough. Where other football clubs bring in play, three or four players in the space of a couple of weeks, we struggle to bring in one player in a, in, in a whole entire month. We hear about a rumor for like two months before we get a player through the door, and because of why. There's, there's a banker who's, who's, um, who's, who's negotiating fees, transfer fees for players. You see what I'm saying? So in that aspect, if we had a footballing guy making those decisions and who's the one who, ne- who negotiates transfer fees, we would be very efficient in terms of recruitment, in terms of who we let go, in terms of um, who we phase out and how we plan going forward. That's what made these uh, the likes of Man City, the likes of Chelsea, the likes of Liverpool now being dominant in the league. It's not a coincidence. It's this, these are properly run football clubs. It is what it is. But um, obviously, I said I would, I'd rather have Ten Hag. That was the first point. I'd rather have Ten Hag over Poch 
for obvious reasons. Ten Hag plays expensive football. He's very entertaining. Um, it's very entertaining. Um, he knows how to blend youth and experienced players in the starting uh, starting eleven. Um, he also, um, you know, he's he's a big figure. He's a manager on his way up. Like this is the next step for him. Whereas opposed to us in the in in the past, we usually would be going for managers who are on their way down. Mourinho comes to to mind. Louis van Gaal comes to mind. All these managers, people tell you these were experienced managers. These were managers who were proven and, you know, experienced, but they were on their way down. We got these managers at the wrong time of their careers. I've always cried about this. And it's the same thing as we, if we get Poch now, he's on his way down. Two years ago, yes, I would agree. Pochettino, number one target. Right now, no, he's on his way down. So why are we looking for someone who's, who's on their way down? So this is where we break the cycle. This is where Ten Hag comes in. But then now, for me, it's not even about the manager. I'm going to look at who they employ to support Ten Hag. That's, what, that's the most important thing to me. If I see that they don't employ competent people and they, they, they try and, and hire, uh, bring in coaching staff like former former football players to be the coaching, uh, to form a coaching staff for Ten Hag, this is why, again, I'm going to have a problem. I'm not going to be optimistic and I'm going to call it for what it is. These players are under huge amount of pressure right now. Everyone, everyone is looking at them. Everyone is looking at what, we, what um, we're going to do for this manager. Because if this manager fails, these guys are screwed. They literally screwed because who are they going to hide behind now? The media is going to turn their backs on them as well. They might have, obviously, a lot of these media guys are in their pockets. That's why when you go to, when these managers, our managers go to press conferences, they don't get asked specific questions. They don't never get asked specific questions because um, they, they, they're in the pockets of, of, of the club's owners and they want to get perks of being close to the club and getting information within the club ahead of other journalists. It's very competitive industry, so I would understand why they do that. But where's your integrity as journalists? Why don't you go into um, the, in, in, in the Man United press conferences and ask real questions and ask what are these owners plan? What are we doing to change how we're, how we're conducting transfers? How are we changing the structure of the club? You understand? Because it's not saving anyone um, anything now because I don't even watch press conferences anymore because the questions are so blunt. It's a waste of bloody time that you have. I'd rather spend that time doing something very constructive than what people ask questions that, you know, a five-year-old should would be asking someone. So, yeah, man. Um, obviously, the second point is... Um, this is our top four chances. Um, I've said this and I'll keep saying it. I don't know about the rest of the, 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 the guys on, on my show, but my point is that we're not making top four. The top four is gone this season. And I believe that's a good thing because we're not a club that traditionally spends a lot of money when, we're in the, when we've made the Champions League spot. When we're in the Europa League, these owners will, will, will you know, it's like they, they, they get a, a rude awakening. It's like they get a, a rude awakening, you understand? Um, so they're forced to spend because when they're out of the Champions League, they lose sponsorship money. And, you know, from Adidas, obviously, because Adidas has a structured deal with us as opposed to if we're not competing in the Champions League, they, they have their full rights to cut their sponsorship money in 30%. In 30%. You understand? So that's why these owners... Um, try and spend money to get back into the Champions League. They're not here to compete. And they don't realize what they're doing isn't sustainable. You've got clubs like Newcastle. You've got clubs like um, um, Aston Villa who are, who are coming. Newcastle next season will be making a leap, a huge leap. These are the teams we will be competing with for top four. If you're not here to be competing to win league titles, you're, it's gonna, it's gonna be a point. It's gonna come to a point where Man United won't even make top four. Um, 
um, just bringing in my guests right now. Um, Oh, I've got a man. If you're not, um, if you're not ambitious enough to like um, bring in, you know, to 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 try and compete, to try and compete um, for 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 like um, the league titles, and you you only you only chase top four. This is what happens. This is why these teams will catch up, you know. And th these guys, I don't know how they're gonna in the next ten years. I think they might end up selling because they're not gonna be able to compete with these teams. The likes of Newcastle and Aston Villa have been spent. Um, they, 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 they're receiving huge investments from their owners. They're well-run clubs now. They conduct uh, 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 transfers efficiently. They're getting, play they're getting in players um, that suit their, 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 their ethos. You know, the players that help them improve on the pitch. They don't just buy players for the sake of buying. So this thing, I don't know, like it's not going to last. And I think we'll see how it goes. But yeah, man. Welcome to the show. Uh, finally, um, uh, you joined me at African time, man. Um, but you know, um, once again, welcome, man. It's it's all united. We it's all united today. We you know we can go all in. Um, there's no specific topic that we need to you know um, touch upon. Like it's 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 just me, you, and I, man. And we're just gonna hash it out. And yeah, man. Um, obviously. I'm gonna leave it to you because I already answered. I already answered the the the, the ten hand versus Poch thing. You know, um, I want to hear your views, man. Who do you think we should? Get? Think we should get? Uh, hi everyone, and apologies, man. Apologies, hey, African time. Eh? Um, well, at the end of the day, we are African, so we tend to, uh, you know, uh, miss. Well, when it comes to you know um, the ten Hag and uh, Pochettino decision to me i feel like it's a very clear and easy decision to be made pochettino wasn't able to win anything with tottenham and he had the players he had the players from back to mid to forwards he had the players but he couldn't win anything instead he reached the champions league final and he failed to win it i mean that final was very boring tottenham could have won it but liverpool won it a coach with a clear mindset on what he wanted ended up winning. As boring as the game was, he won. So when it comes to Pochettino, you can see with uh, PSG, from how I'm seeing it, he's failing. And when I say he's failing, a PSG is like a Man City. They are looking to win the Champions League. That's the like the main, the one important trophy that, that they want to win. So now when it comes to, you know, just winning the league or maybe certain trophies, it's not the same as going to win the league, uh, the Champions League, I mean. So that's why I'm saying that uh, a coach like that who's not able to grab control of his own team, of his own players, uh, it'll be very hard to come to a Man United. Already Man United has issues with players that have more power than the managers and the coaches, you know. So how will Pochettino come in when he's not able to grapple PSG properly and actually lead them towards winning. I mean, they were already winning. It was clear. They won the first leg. Come second leg, they win in 2-0. Two, two so how does it then happen? That's what I'm saying. Manchester already and the players that we have. Well, let me say some, because not everyone has that, that mentality, but we are bottlers. If he's a bottler, how do, how do you take a bottler and put him uh, in the midst of other bottlers? We need a, a fresh idea fresh ideas from a from a, a whole new different coach and i mean if you've been following ix as much as you don't watch uh, that league but if you're following and checking out their results and what they've been achieving and what ten hag has been has been achieving there it's great he gets scored less he scores more goals with the attack that we have or and whatever attack will be added we'll continue scoring more goals we clearly do have goals in us I don't know if it was the last season or the season before that we scored more, our forwards scored more goals than Liverpool. And Liverpool had won the league, if not the Champions League. So if you look at it like that, we do have the goals. We just need everything else to be set up the right way. Our mid is trash right now. At times we play 
only with Bruno. And if Bruno is the only one who's playing and who's able to get the balls forward, we don't have enough firepower in the mid. When you when Pogba is the one who's performing and Bruno is not, you know, it doesn't link properly. And we don't we don't even have a CDM. So right now we need a coach or a manager rather who will come in, set in, you know, what he wants to instill in the team. That's if they let him do it, because that's what has always been a problem when it comes to Man United. We can get all the best managers that we want, but when up high, they are not clear on what they want to win, we won't win anything. Because when you when you employ a manager and his coaches and he tells you exactly what he wants, I mean, we've heard this morning that uh, Ten Hag got interviewed. What's the use of him getting interviewed and him telling them exactly what he wants to do when and then they give him the job and fail to then give him everything that he told them in the interview? Because that, that's where the problem is. Mourinho was one of the greatest coaches that we got after uh, Ferguson. But it doesn't matter if you don't give him the players that he wants. You know, if he tells you, I want this player, that player, and then you don't, he won't achieve as much as he, he would want to. But as much as it was so hard, he was he was able to win uh, two trophies, the Europa, and I think was it a, not FA Cup, was it a Shield? Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. But he was able to win trophies with that bunch you know, with a board that was trash, that wasn't willing to give him the players that he wanted. So we can be excited. I won't lie. I'm excited about Ten Hag. I, I hope uh, they end up getting him because he's a, he's a coach with fresh new ideas. The same way that a club and a Tuch, the Tuch came to the English Premier League and said a clear, you know, ideas and their tactics on how they wanted to play and results actually started coming. I mean, when Klopp came to Liverpool, I mean, I watch football. As much as I'm not a Liverpool fan, I'm a Man United. But when he came to, to Liverpool, you could see what he was trying to do. As much as he didn't have the players, all the players that he wanted. But you, you could clearly see what he wanted to do. He wanted to press harder. He wanted to attack harder and quick. And that's what he started doing. And as, as the season went by and the transfers came, came in, he was able to get and fit in those players that he wanted. And because of his clear understanding of how he wants to play he got the right players all he always gets the right players he has never missed even right now he got uh, uh luis diaz and he is smashing it same with jota he got in there he's been scoring goals since you know when you get a coach you know what manchester can do for themselves right now is to keep ragnick and then after keeping him and let him be the one to work with Ten Hag if they get him. Then we'd see something very great if they do that. But if the, the board decides, no, uh, we're going to get... Because there's, there's been rumors now that they might get rid of Ragnik. And if they get rid of him, it means uh, a Ten Hag can come in, but he may not uh, achieve the same that, is, that he has achieved with Ajax. Because that's where the problem is. If up high or the board uh, is failing, there is no way that... The managers, the coaches, even the players, you know, uh, will succeed. I mean, right now we're fighting for top four. How the hell is the Man United? And we've been, it's not like we're starting now. We've been fighting for top four. And and that's the worst of all. The last time we won an English Premier League was with Ferguson. That is, that, that is insane to think of, to think that the last time we won a league or we fought for a league. Because with uh, Ole, we were number two, but that number two didn't really mean anything. Because we're very far from number one, you know. So I, I hope that um, since they're saying they're impressed with Ten Hag, they will literally just go and get him. You know, if it was me, I would literally be like, you know what? He's a clear coach who works with the youth, works with all the players. I would literally just get him. I would not even try and interview Pochettino. I mean, he, he's not even playing with, with youth uh, at PSG. He's playing with all crocs, players that have played for so long. You can see that... What PSG was trying to do was to win now and now, just win now. You know, when it comes to the youth, their youth is trying to leave because even Pochettino is not using the youth that much. Some of his youth are trying to leave. Some have left already. So if you bring in someone who won't be using the youth that much, like Pochettino, we're going to continue using, using our youth as well. And we have so many of them that are not even getting used, you know. And obviously, those players are going to get tired. Already, they're not being used because even all they failed to use them. Ragnik comes in, he uses one or two, you know, and when I say fail to use them, we can't really count Greenwood. 
Green was just one. We have so much uh, firepower in terms of the youth itself that if we decided to take four or five players, we could literally fit them in in, in, in the first, first team. If the, the first team players who are playing like a Maguire are not playing properly. And I'm saying youth, even though we still have players like uh, Bailey, we still have players like Lindelof, who are not youth, but who are better than Maguire. But they are not getting game time if Maguire and Varana play. And it's clearly messed up because Lindelof performs, but Maguire can still come in. Even if he's been trash or he was injured or he got a red card, doesn't matter. And this has been really confusing me because I'm like, I thought a, a, a manager like Ragnick would literally be like, you know what? I'm going to put you in the bench because you've been trash. But instead, he's trash, but he still gets the captaincy, still gets to play, and still gets to dictate what he says to other players. He is leading while he can even play himself. You know, So if uh, Ma- Ma- Manchester t- doesn't try and prove or remove some of these people who don't know football, because this one thing is messing, messing us up. We have a, a football club that has people who are not football people leading, telling us what to do, getting the players, and telling the scouts that's not the right player. I mean, we were supposed to get Zakaria, who went to, to uh, Juventus. But instead, there were rumors that he's not the right fit of, of a player. Who, who the hell are you, as someone who doesn't know f- football, to say a certain player is not the right fit? I, I mean... You don't know football already, so how do you get to choose or determine, you know, or make that determination that such a player is not the right fit for Man United, you know? And I hope that they get a, a manager like Tan Hag because we need to move away from this, uh, how we've been buying players, buying big players who have already made it, who probably are left with like two years uh, to reach 30. We need to move away from such uh, players. We need to start buying players that are up and coming who might even cost you 30 or maybe 40. We, we can't be, you know, continuing doing this thing of spending around 70 or 100. I mean, it clearly hasn't worked for us. As much as I like Pogba, for example, it hasn't worked. He cost Man United about 100, but he hasn't really worked. You know, we could have bought two players with that 100 or even three that could have played, let's say, maybe in the same position, or maybe another one in, an, in another position. But instead, we went and got Pogba. Right now, we went and got Sancho. I mean, I know Sancho is doing his things right now. But when he was failing to do his things, what was being said? The price kept on being mentioned. You know, he cost us $75 million, uh, but he's not really playing, you know. And now he was even getting compared to players like Saka. As good as Saka is, he's good, yeah. But when you get compared to... Uh, let's say an Arsenal development player while you've played for Dortmund and played in the Champions League so so many times, now people are failing to see that you're good because they're saying if I compare him to Saka currently you know, so it's, it's, yeah, it's one of those things, that's what I'm saying, they should just get a proper coach, get football people and then we'll see a Manchester rising but we'll see if they're even trying to do that, but yeah it's Ten Hag or, uh, or not anyone for me, because even the other Managers that, that are getting mentioned, I won't lie to you. I really don't want those those managers because some of them, I look at them and I'm like, you went to coach a big team, you failed. L- 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 is it Lopafego? L- 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 yeah, that Spanish guy, the one who's coaching Sevilla right now. Sevilla, yeah, Sevilla right now. He failed to win anything with uh, Madrid and he got sacked. And when that happened, they went and got uh, another coach. You know, and look at what who's this? Um, the other guy, Luis Enrique, yeah, the one who coached Barcelona. I won't really count him because he got a Barcelona when it was a, 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 at its peak, when it was good. Like, I, I want to call you see a coach like Ten Hag, you've seen what he's done with young players with players that we don't, we don't even know, uh, with Ajax, and you saw how he was able to uplift the team, instill certain things in the team and in the players as well. There's a type of coach or manager I want to see. Because I would really like to see what 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 he would do with the Man United. Yeah, man. Um, great points. Great points mentioned. Um, very very tough at Man United. You know, we it's it's like I don't know how to feel 
with 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 Ten Hag, like I was saying previously before you joined me, I was like, I don't know whether to be happy or you know, I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna be reserved, you know, about this because you know it's for me it's about if they get this guy in, you know, pretty much if they get this guy in, um there ha- there has to be support. That I wanna see who they're gonna hire to support this guy because for me that's the most significant part out, out of all of it. You know, um, I'm hearing rumors of Paul Mitchell. I don't know, being appointed as a deputy um, sporting director. I don't know, man. We'll, but we'll see. But I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not really um, very optimistic about anything at, at this club. To be honest, um, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm in the middle right now because right now, um, <sighs> hey, my guy. <laughs> Man United will make you go crazy. Like I've I've been stressing this a lot, and we still have Fletcher in the dugout, man. And I and there's a rumor now that they're saying that um he might they push him for him to be like the the, the assistant manager for for whoever comes in now. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So for me, it was like, oh, Tenag, we looked at Tenag. Then I hear that kind of story coming out. Then I'm like, then what's the point of me being being um, happy now? Because you just told me exactly what I didn't want to hear. And for them, if they get rid of uh, Ralph Regnick, then for me, that tells me it's, uh, we're done for. Again, Ten Hag is done for. Like, I hope Ten Hag told them during this interview that okay i have my own reservations if i come in will i be in charge of the coaching the kind of coaching stuff that i bring in will i be in co- in charge of uh, who i want out of the team who i pick and select you understand and who i bench and who i get rid of you understand those things need to i think managers need to look after themselves better with these things because you get to a club like Man United, you're, 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 an, you're a coach on the up, and you know that this kind of job can either make or break your career as a manager. You need to have those, those security. You need to have that job. That's a job security for you, man. You, you need to look after yourself. It's just like when you go for employment, you ask them how much they're going to win. They, 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 they ask you how much are they, can they pay you, and you tell them, if I can earn so much between this and this, I'm okay. And what are the benefits? They tell you what, what the benefits are, you understand? And you can that's when you can weigh up your options and say, you know, the benefits are good. And I'll pick the job that, that has better benefits. You understand? Because at the end of the day, you look at you're looking at uh you're looking out for yourself long term and your family. So in men in terms of Ten Hag, I, I I hope he inserts that in his contract. I hope there's a clause that allows him to have full control of that team. Because if he doesn't do that, he's doomed. He's just going to end up like everyone else who came before him. And there's no point if that's how it's going to go. You know, um, We'll be back here two years, three years later saying Ten Hag out. Saying the board out. You know, it's been a cycle for the last 10 years. We know that. We've been here so many times with Louis van Gaal. We've been here with Mourinho. We've been here with, with David Moyes. We've been here with so shy. How long, like, when does it come to a point where it's like, you know what, screw this. We're going for this, these these guys now. It's over now. We don't want to hear what they want to do. We don't want to hear who, which players they want. I heard, I heard that they might be chasing Lewandowski, but who cares? Who cares? I hope that guy doesn't even want to come here because we're going to be in the Europa League. <laughs> you understand? So, um, <laughs> we'll see. But, uh, man, I'm not looking... Honestly, I'm not looking forward to Thursday night football. Um, it looks likely that that's gonna be, um, that's our destination for next season. And um, I hope these guys, if if they don't, if they don't make Thursday night football, I hope they they, they just throw away the rest of the games because I don't want to end up in that conference. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Even Spurs ditched it. That's how bad that competition is. Spurs even ditched it. It's a third-rate European competition. So I hope they do <laughs> throw it away. But yeah, man, um, what do you think about our top four chances? Because you guys on Monday, you were saying that you don't believe that it's, it's, it's gone for Man United. You still think there's a chance. So um, 
what what do you think about top four? I've I've said my piece and I wanna hear you, man. Well, you know, when it comes to the top four, né? Because we've seen a Man United pull up, and the the thing is, right now they have nothing else to play for, and to try and uh, be in the good books with the fans, the only thing you can do is get top four, even though top four is not really a trophy, you know. So, and I I said like in the last podcast as well, we do have the players, we just need to perform. That's it, and if we perform and then we win, we get our top four. Because right now it's a bit hard because you look at uh, these two teams that are above us. One still has a game in hand and it's above us with four points. That's where the problem is. At least we know one of the game in hand, in hand they're going to be playing against Chelsea. And then we still going to play them. So if we win those, if they get beaten and we win uh, our game against them, then we have a chance. But remember, like I said, we still have to play those big teams as well. We still to play Chelsea. We still to play Liverpool. You know, uh, Man City. Okay, at least we're past them, even though we got whooped. But that's all we can actually do. We need to play what's in front of us and win. That's all. Right now, we can't really uh, be taking chances, lose or draw. We can't. There's so many games that we played and we drew. We're not supposed to draw. Burnley. We're not supposed to, to draw to a Burnley, but we did. We draw to Watford. Not supposed to do that. So what needs to happen now is we need to just go there and just fuck shit up and win. You know, then we can have our chance. Like I said, I, I'm a, I'm very hopeful. I'm very I'm very I'm a very positive, very hopeful type of fan. And there's I've, I've supported a Man United for so many years, and I'm a diehard Man United. No matter how how many times people can make fun of it, I'm still here. I still post and say Man United. I don't care. I'm one of those people because I remember from like 2014 when now we're playing trash. People were like, "You're you're supporting Man United." I'm like, I don't care to the point where I'm like, I I'm even I even want to go get a Man United tattoo. I'm a diehard Man United fan, so you know. So I'm hoping. No, like I'm, I'm for real. You, you can laugh all you want. I'm for real. I, I'll go and get that Man United Man United tattoo. I'm literally gonna get. It's gonna be huge, you know. So I'm there. So I'm hoping that when I make that decision, they'll also be making the right decisions to get a proper coach, get a better structure, you know, get better players that uh, actually have a clear mindset on winning. Because you can't go get a Maguire, go get a Juan Pisaka, who have never felt the joy of winning, of winning silverware. You know, because I, I feel like that, that's where the problem was. Ole was not a coach who had won a, a trophy as a coach or as a manager and then he went and got players that didn't have the feeling of winning and i know you can't get every player who, who is a winner in terms of trophies but you can get a player who has a mindset on winning i mean when we got a, a cristiano ronaldo he had not won a trophy but he was a, a clear winner and those are the type of players we need to get you know so top four we do have a chance because Arsenal and the Tottenham, they still to play other big teams. They still to fumble because right now Arsenal has been winning. And I feel they still have a fumble in them. Three or two fumbles, if not more. You know, we're still to play them as well. If they fumble against us, they're still to play Chelsea. And I think they still to play Tottenham as well. We won against Tottenham. That's the thing. They can get there and draw. That's good for us. You know, we just can't keep making those mistakes of, of dropping any points. We must just fuck shit up and just continue winning. That's all we can do right now, you know. So if we do that, continue. Because that's the problem. If we win, I believe we'll get top four. But if we we continue losing and drawing, we won't. Because there is no way. Already Arsenal is above us. And Tottenham is. So there is no way they will continue dropping as much points as we, we, we've dropped. So they must just win. So Arsenal, like I said, they still have a fumble in them. Two or three, if not more. So if they fumble, we win. We have top four. To the point that we, we might even have top three. Because at Chelsea as well, they're still in the Champions League. They are still in the FA Cup. You know. And like I said, right now, we are not playing for anything else but top four. So if you continue playing properly and have a clear 
idea set on what we want to do for already there's nothing else you can you cannot really plan anything now the season is over for us we must just get top four that's it and then the new manager can then come in with a fresh start uh with champions league football because yeah i literally don't want to watch this 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 the night football as well i mean we failed how many seasons have we failed to win a trophy when we played this night football you can clearly see it's either we're cast not to win it or because we don't have winners in our team we don't win it so yeah i wouldn't want i i, I would rather go to a champions league and lose in whatever stage you'll be in and then go out and not be shifted to Europa. That's why even now, I don't want to end up to like Europa. Yo, conference, yo, that would be a nightmare, dog. Like, yo, conference league, nah. Like, I feel like that would be a waste. If we do end up there, then I'd rather we just play the, the kids. Yeah, I'd rather we just take the kids from development, play them, let them play, let them, you know, get that game time, get that experience. And not play the big guns, not play if we still have Cristiano, that's if we still have have him, not play Cristiano, not play all the big players, play the kids. That's what I would literally do. Because we have enough to actually field a goalkeeper, field a back a, a back four, field a, a mid three, and field a front three. We can literally put Ilanga there, put Shotetire, put um if we do Palestri, if we do bring back Palestri. Uh, cause hey, right now he's been going on low, but we do have so much in front. We have uh, Diallo. Yo, we even have other other kids that I don't even know. You know, like even the other one who plays for Morocco is is Moroccan and he was playing the thingy, uh, the Afcon. We have so many players. It's just a uh, Ghana as well. Ghana is the player that is playing for Nottingham Forest. He should be playing in the first team actually, cause we don't really have a CDM. You know. So I, I I do hope, I hope and I believe we can get top four as long as we do it for ourselves. You know, if we continue winning, Hassan will fumble because they still to play the big guns, three if not four of them. So, yeah, we will get the top four if we win and do it for ourselves. I see you still optimistic about the top four. <laughs> But yeah, man. Um, I guess you know it is what it is. It's in it's in the blood of, of 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 being a football fan and being a Man United fan. At the end of the day, you're still gonna be optimistic, and it's only natural, man. Um, I mean, Arsenal. Yeah, they've got tough games. Um, and we've. I think we've also. <laughs> we've only we we still gotta play Chelsea. We still gotta also play Liverpool, and it's scary to think that we're going to Anfield now. You know, if they they did that to us, they in at Old Trafford, man, it's, and it's gonna be a nightmare at Enfield at this at this point. You know, I don't trust. First and foremost, I don't trust these players because these players, you know, you get your Paul Pogba now coming out and saying at Man United doesn't know what position he's playing. You know, uh, at international break, he's, he's coming out with that. You know, that's more toxic. You you keep that kind of information to yourself. You know, until you leave or until the season is, is respectively over. You don't say those things going into a running. You realize now, they, do these players even realize now that um, they have to play for top four? I don't think any, any one of them cares, to be honest. Because you saw um, during the, this break now, this short break, this um, international break, a lot of them went to Dubai. Some of them went to the Grand Prix. Some of them went, you know what I'm saying? So it shows, it shows who's... Whose mindset is where? You know, um, I saw your, I saw Rashford in Dubai, man, and kicking it off with his girlfriend, and I was like, okay, this is a guy who was who who was getting pissed off for being called called out for poor performances, you know, um, and people are saying no, oh, we should feel sorry for these players, we shouldn't go at these players. You gotta go at these players. You you mustn't. They must understand that they. This is like when you play for a club as big as ours, you're going to be scrutinized. Every single thing you're going to be scrutinized upon. You know, it's going to be tenfold. It is what it is, but it comes with the package. So if these players think, you know, we're going to come here and earn the big bucks and not get um, criticized heavily, then they're at the wrong club. You understand? 
these these are the same sort of players who think they can go and play for Real Madrid and Barcelona. Do, do they even know in Spain how how hectic it is? Inland is it's, it's, it's small waters compared to Spain. In Spain, they literally attack your car for poor performances. <laughs> Ask Gareth Bale; he'll tell you that. You know, but um, <laughs> but you know, um, yeah, man. Um, for some, you know, we'll just pray for a miracle. But a lot of I feel that a lot of fans are now wishing that we we actually finish in the Europa League because they think these owners will not spend money if we qualify again for the Champions. I think they have that fear that these owners won't want to spend because there's a rumor now that is also going circulating saying that um, Man United, um, the, the 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 board apparently will not look to spend a lot of money in this coming transfer window. Guys, this this that's the reality of the matter right now, you know. And so this is what, this is why I think I feel like fans are like, you know what? If that's the case, let's get out of. The, let's not make the Champions League because these guys, all they're going to do is extend contracts and of even dead players. Imagine if they give Mata one, another extra year, man. You know? <laughs> and no, I wouldn't put it past this board. I'm telling you, I wouldn't put it past this board. Like, they could do that because I'm hearing now they're trying to give Maguire a new contract, but they don't know how, how they're going to come up with it. <laughs> They're actually gonna. Um, they're trying to put Maguire on a, on on on, on a, 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 an improved deal, a deal that's gonna make sure that he retires. Yeah, you see, you see what I'm. You, this is why. <laughs> this is why I'm not optimistic, my guy. <laughs> but I'm gonna let you speak now. Nah, bro. Like you see, when it comes to this Man United of ours, it's just a mess, man. How do you give a new and improved deal to Maguire? Like, my thing is, they should be focusing on getting a new manager. That's all they should be focusing on. And then let the manager decide if he wants to keep Maguire. And if the manager says, Maguire is trash, I don't want that fridge in my locker, then get the get that fridge out of the locker. Nah, fam. Like, like the, the way this club has been run, and if fans have been paying attention, for the past, let's say, three years, using all his time, right? They've been doing this, even with Mourinho. We, they'll give you one season where they'll buy players for you, even if they don't buy exactly the players that you need. They'll spend for you. And then comes uh, the next season. Next season, they want, you know. And if, let's say, it depends with the results as well. You see how right now it, it might happen and we don't make the top four. And they now say because they spent 75 million on uh, Sancho, they spent 25 on Cristiano, spent, I think it was 30 or 40 for, for Varane. So they think, they are sitting there thinking we've done a great job. We don't need to be spending for the next transfer. That's how they, they are thinking is. And that's been, like I remember seeing a meme one time where they were like, uh, the Man United circle. The coach or the manager will coach the team. Maybe messes up. They don't buy for you. Messes up. Maybe you drop out of the the top four. When you drop out, what will happen? They will then decide to buy for you to try fix what they've messed up. Because fans are complaining, and then you get to top four, and then you start hearing maybe rumors won't buy, won't be spending much, you know. And then it happens that because they did not spend, because right now for Ole, they should have spent for Ole to get a CDM. That was one of the main and most important position that you should have spent on we we, we we needed two positions which one was a center back we got a center back great and then we needed what cdm we didn't get a cdm as much as we went and got a cristiano i feel like it was a waste of money because of the position that was lacking you know metage i remember listening to someone saying if metage was uh young right now we wouldn't be complaining or crying about a CDM because he actually shows how a CDM should be playing. I don't remember seeing uh, Fred or McTominay hit a long through pass towards our player. I remember the, the goal that we scored against um, Tottenham, the ball that went to Sancho, and then Sa Sancho slipped in Cristiano, and then all Cristiano had to do was just tap in. You won't see McTominay or Fred do that. 
you know. So my my point is, how do you then keep someone who you know that won't be able to play so many games? This like you mentioned, Mata. I don't even know why they kept Mata. I believe Mata has only played two games, if not three. You know, and it's like, why keep him? Get rid of him. Like it's a pity that even players like Bai. He's chilling there, and we know what he can do. That's a messed up. But this one, you see that the board and whoever makes this these decisions are messed up. They decided to give him a new, a uh, renewed contract, right? Only for them not to play him. Only started that trend. He wasn't playing because he was always picking his favorite, Maguire Lindelof. You know, and I will pardon Lindelof because Lindelof has actually proved and shown that he's better than Maguire. You can go to anyone. And if that person says to you that, no, Maguire is better than Lindelof, then they do not know football. And the reason I'm saying that we've seen, Lindelof was, was able to play in a position that he's never played before. And he was great in that position. Maguire plays in his position every game. But he has a mistake in him every game. If you count the, the, the number of mistakes that Maguire has made, uh, they have cost us so many points. Because... There'll be a game where, let's say, we're winning. Like, look at the Tottenham game, for example. Cristiano scored two goals. Already had done his job as a forward. What does Maguire do? First goal, can't pick up his his players, can't even lead his back foot to tell them, uh, look up, open your eyes. Second goal, scores a, 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 an on goal. When he does that, how do you expect a player like, Okay, right now I'm talking about Christian, but let's say a forward. A forward does his job, and then you as a defender fail to do your job. How do you expect him to feel? If he gets into the changing room or the locker and tells you off, he has a right to tell you off because you're trash. But instead, Maguire uh, doesn't see that he's trash. You know, and then because he doesn't see, he continues getting game time, he continues keeping the captaincy. You know, he feels he's the best captain we've ever had. I, I believe that's what he thinks. You know, and if I look at it, and I know it's, it's crazy to even just blame one player, but I believe he's, he's the court for us not getting top four. And the reason why I'm saying that, if they had decided to play another centre-back, I, I believe we'll be saying something different. But it's cost us so many games. I can count four games that Maguire has, has messed us up. And if all those four games were won, who could have been comfortably in top four or maybe top three? Four games, not even counting the rest of the games. Maybe two games that two games that we lost and two games that we drew. You know, we could have gotten those points and we could have been above Chelsea. But because no, we're still playing the same trash that we've been playing. And the, the board, the board is, is cool with these players that feel they have power. Because th that's the thing. This board is the one that's, that has messed up Man United. The board and the Glazers, the owners. Because how do you give power to players who are playing trash? And then when a manager comes in and tells you he's trash, I don't want him to play. You tell the manager, you're trash. Play him. Because we've seen, we've even had so many rumors. There's leaks. And there's no one else who will be leaking but the players. I don't know how many players are leaking, but the one that we've had is the one who's leaking. He's our captain. Like, the, the thing is, people always say, there's no smoke without, without, without fire. Clearly... Maguire is, is the one who's been uh, starting the fire, starting the fire in the locker, maybe in the bin, going there and putting papers, you know, maybe putting a uh, signed autograph of Cristiano or whoever and saying, I'm starting a fire. Because you've had people blaming Cristiano and saying he's, he's to blame for how badly we've been performing. How the hell can one player who is playing forward, who is waiting for the ball to be passed to him to score? I mean, if you brought in someone to to actually score his job is to score but then you, don't, you do not get the ball to him instead he has to go to the mid to actually get the ball and start the attack and then you say to me there's a reason cristiano scored the goal that he scored when he plays, uh, played against tottenham that, that that long range because he's not in the 18 because he has to go out and get the ball you know and the goal that he scored like i said the one the central pass is because we had a smart uh cdm playing there it's just that he doesn't have the legs anymore. He, he he can't run the whole 90 minutes anymore. But if he could, would score many more goals like that. Because what I've seen with Metej, he does what a, a, a center defensive midfield should be doing. Wins the ball and is able to ping the ball. 
if you win the ball quickly and you ping the ball very quickly up front, you're able to quickly score. And that is clearly what usually happens with the Liverpool. A Liverpool wins the ball. If the goalkeeper doesn't ping the ball, Henderson is there as a CDM. He pings the ball. You'll see who Salah, Mane, Firmino, or Jota, or Luis Diaz, now that they have this place. You'll see those players making runs and scoring. They have different tactics and different ways of playing. With the Man United, it's like, if we do not play this way, because you, you knew it Ole. Ole liked playing long for some reason, which did not even work for him. You know, if you do not play that way, it's like we don't have another way of playing. You saw with Atletico, for example, as well. It was hard for us to break their defense. But instead of us maybe finding other tactics, uh, I mean, I, I know Ralph did try other new things, but if we you have the same trash players, you know, if you have five players in an 11 that are trash, it'd be impossible at times to actually get the win. You know, so, nah, man, like, I feel like they should, just, like, yo, you know, when it comes to this uh, ownership that is owning us right now, you, you, I remember you mentioned uh, your, your Newcastle. Newcastle is going to surpass us. That's what I see. Newcastle is going to become the new Man City. We were better than the Man City. Man City got better owners with money. And what happened now? They surpassed us. And when I say surpassed us, not in terms of trophies, but in terms of performance, Year in, year, out, year in, year out, they there, they're performing, they're winning trophies, you know. And that's what's going to happen with a uh, Newcastle. A Newcastle is going to stay up right now because they're clearly going to stay up. And when they do stay up, what's going to happen? They have the money to buy the players. And because they have the money to buy the players, the owners clearly have a clear understanding of what they want. They want to win trophies. And it doesn't matter if, the, if they are new owners or they just came in now, but they have a clear understanding of what they want to do. With our owners, we don't, and it's, it's confusing because they have money. They want to make more money. If you want to make more money, make us perform. Get the right players, the right managers, the right structure. And when we do perform and win trophies, you're going to get more money. But it's confusing. It's like they want to make money without spending money on the right uh, material or right people, you know. So, yeah, bro, I, I don't even know. Like, it's one of those things where it's like, if we as fans had a say in removing, let's say, the owners or maybe changing up the board, I feel like we'd have something to Because at times I feel like the fans, us the fans, we know better than the actual people who are there. We know better than the board. We know better than, you know. And I know it's easy for me to say that, but they've been messing up for the past nine years now. We haven't won the league in the past, what, nine or ten years. And that's when you know that they don't know what they're doing. Yeah, no, man. Um, I mean, someone has to have told them, you know, at some point you can't run a football club in England like a franchise. You know, it's it's going to come to an end where where the money is going to dry up. You know, sponsors are going to be a one. They want to associate themselves with teams that are winning. You understand? How can sponsors now ignore teams like you know, the likes of Chelsea, the likes of Liverpool, the likes of Man City who are they're all constantly growing. These teams are always constantly growing. So the, the, the support ship will, will obviously, over the years, they will gain the next generation of fans because I don't see kids. Kids nowadays, you know, if you, like, um, tell them about Man United, they'll be like, you know, oh, Man United, oh, now, can't we support Chelsea or Liverpool? You know, I've been hearing that a lot where, where these guys were saying, that their kids were were, were, tell, were asking them, what what about Chelsea? What about Man City? What about you understand? This is this is what it's coming to. And I don't think these owners understand this thing. You know, you're gonna lose a whole generation of fans because you're losing. No one wants to come in and support teams that have no ambition. They have they're not a football club essentially. Man United is not a, it's no longer a football club right now. We're just a franchise, we're just a business. So um they're in danger of that. I don't see them being here for the next 20 years. I honestly can't because the money's going to dry, you know. And this thing of Americans, I think it's, it's American ownership because I feel like it's, it's, it's with every, every one of these American ownerships. Like every one of these guys, they want to cut corners and try and get rich at the same time. And you can't do that. You know, it's like they're trying to save money at the same time trying to make money it doesn't make sense like the, the the most important um ruler in business you know it's you take more risks 
you the the the, the greater um, uh, um, the, the the rewards, isn't it? That's that's the the main principle of business, you know. So I don't know where they where they learned what they they doing because they can only do it for so long. It's gonna catch up with them. It slightly is catching up with them because the more of the more these clubs get competent owners, there's the, the smaller clubs. Your Newcastle. That's why even Aston Villa were able to pull uh, transfer coups. It's because their owners are also wealthy. And now there's a rumor that another team is also, you know, one of these lower teams is, might get a new owner as well. So, you know, it's it's big for these guys. These guys, they're not going to get away with what they're doing right now because I don't I don't honestly see them making as much money in the, in the nearest future as they are right now. Man United has reached its peak in terms of revenue, you know, and in, in terms of value. So... I mean, it is what it is, but um, I think there's one more thing I wanted to actually ask you before we we, we, we space out uh, and retire for the night. Um, what would you do? Like, if you're the manager, you're appointed now, and you're given the license to... Um, change your backroom staff, um, who you want to work with as a sporting director, which players you want, which players you want to let go of, which players you want to renew contracts of, which youngsters you want to bed into the team. Like, what would you do? Like, what would you do if you were the manager and you were given that license, that free license by, by, by the board? Uh, that's a great question, actually, bro. Like, yeah, that's a great question, bro. I would literally, there's, yeah, there's so many players. There'll be so much overhaul in Manchester. I would get rid of so many players. Maguire would be gone. Uh, Matic would be gone. Mata would be gone. Who else? Like, all Lingard would be gone. Like, Lingard should have been gone a long time ago. Lingard would be gone. Pereira, who is in Brazil right now, would be gone. Um, I would keep Cristiano for the reason that he's a winner and he would be able to give this youngster that I'm trying to put in the team that winning mentality, you know, to learn from him. I would keep him from a, for a season or two. And then uh, Bruno I would keep because I feel like he's also a bit of a victim of um, what has been happening around him as well. Juan Pisaka, you know, looking at Juan Pisaka, I feel like He's a victim, and I'll explain why I'm saying he's a victim. He was signed by a manager who did not improve him as a player. So that's why I have a problem where, okay, as a, as a player, you, you see he has his attributes that he's good at. He can tackle, he can run and tackle, take the ball from him. That's why he's gotten the name Spider-Man. But now the problem is everything else that he needs to do as a Man United player, he can't do. He cannot cross the ball to save his life. And I feel like if you have the right backroom staff that focus on improving other skills, I'm pretty sure he'll be able to cross the ball better than he is now. You know, because there is no way Dalot, because look at Dalot, he hasn't been playing. He knows how to cross. He knows how to defend as well. So if two right backs who play the same position, they should be training together. If he can cross, learn how to cross. And that's what I'm saying. If because uh, remember, I think there was one po podcast that we, do, we did when I said I had rumors that what Ole and his backroom staff would do, they would focus on what the player knows already and work with that instead of focusing on what they know and also improving what they do not know. You know, so that's why I have an issue. So with a Maguire, there's no way of, Mac of, of, of a Maguire improving. He's slow as a snail and we need quick uh, center backs at the back. So there's the way we want to play, where we push forward like a Liverpool or where we push forward like a Man City, you can't play using Maguire because Maguire is a liability there. He cannot run. Well, you see Evan Dijk. Evan Dijk will push up so so much and at the same time he'll still be able to get back and, and win the ball. But Maguire, when he has to come back and win the ball, he can't. You know. So I would, get I would come with my own backroom staff, my own coaches for defending, for crosses, for midfielders, for, you know, attacking forwards, I'll come with my own, you know. And I would, like what you said, I would make sure that in, in my clause, in my contract, 
I I stipulate everything that I want done and I want to see uh, me being given as, as a manager. If I want to buy, if I want to say, if, if, if they tell me they are giving me 100 million or 150, I want to have power uh, on how I buy players. Not this thing of going to buy a player that, that, that is going to sell shirts. Because with a Sancho, yeah, Sancho is a young player who, who, who will be asked for so many seasons. But for 75 million, I feel like I could have gotten another player who could have cost us 40 million. And we take the rest of the money, go buy something. I'm not saying I'm complaining with uh, us getting him, but the way we've been buying players, we've been messing up. How do you buy a one piece sucker who is not a complete right back for 50 million? How do you buy a, a Maguire who is, yo, he's, he's so incomplete? Like, if I was to measure with percentage, uh, I'm pretty sure I'd put Maguire at 40%, if not 35%. So, how do you buy a 35% type centre back for 80 million? While there's, like, we could have literally gone and, and gotten a, a, a Conde right now, you know, who's playing for Sevilla. He's better than him, and we would have gotten him at a very lower a price and he would have been younger Maguire right now is going to be turning 30 soon and that's why i have a problem this thing of buying players that are already in two seasons they're going to be reaching 30 25 is not an issue but getting Maguire who was close to to 30 than you know to 25 you know it wasn't a you know a, a good look right now they want to renew his contract i wouldn't renew Maguire's contract i wouldn't renew uh, you see with Shaw, because certain players, you know, like a Shaw, at times he performs. So it's that thing of, I would like to see him with a better coach. That's what I'm saying. Uh, if I'm the coach, uh, tell us, I'll give Tellers more playing time because he's shown, for example, that he can play. But because of less playing playing time, he hasn't been able to actually show us. So I would put uh, Shaw in the bench, start playing Tellers more. I would play uh, a lot more. Like, I literally set, set up the team where majority is the youth. If Cristiano is playing up front, on the sides, it's the youth. You know, in the mid, it's the youth and it's people maybe under the, uh, who are around the age of 25. You know, I would, like I said, I would, I would let Bruno still, still play there. But people like Mata, Metic, Maguire, I'll get rid of them. No, I would not renew their contract. Lingard, I'll get rid of them. Because there's so many players that are there. Some of them that we are even loaning out so many times. You know, because they, they will never play for a main United. Some of them they won't, you know. Uh, so, yeah, that's what I'll literally do. And I would want to work, you know, it, like if I have the power to say, don't get rid of Ralph. Please get, uh, get me a proper uh, director of football. And the reason I'm saying that, someone like Ten Hag has a proper structure with Ajax. And it makes his job much easier. You know, when you have a proper structure above you, it's much easier to, to perform. Because, you know, as, as a manager, I'll be focusing on just the tactics, getting the right players to play within that tactics. You know, it'll just be me doing my job as a manager, not focusing on, let's say, uh, transfers. Obviously, I want to I want a communication on which transfers they're trying to get so that I can pick and choose on the ones that I uh, feel are a better fit for my system, you know. But if you have the right structure, you don't even need to really consult, you know. If I'm the manager and I have the right structure in terms of uh, above me or, you know, the ones who need to go get me the players, I don't need to really be focused on that. I'll just be focused on the tactics and how I set up for a new season and which players I need. If I tell I need a player that is pacey, a player that can dribble, a player that can cross and pass, you know, a player that, that has strength, I've already given you enough information. You go and give me a list of, let's say, a list of five of the players that I need, you know. And then I would literally even say, listen to the scouts, because we've heard with the Man United, scouts come up with players that are great, but because uh, the board and people above tell the squads that's not the right fit, I literally tell those people uh, not to have a say. I would want to have contact with, with the scouts, you know. As a, as a manager, I would now literally want to have contact with the, with the scouts so that they sit down with me and tell me exactly what they got. And then I can then go as a manager, go start checking out those players. Because we've seen managers going to games to check out a player. I literally do that more, where I get given names and then I go watch them and see if such a player will be a right fit. I mean, look at right now, who is this Xavi? 
Xavi is signing players before the season. He, who is this? The guy from who's playing for AC Milan right now, Casey. Casey is a free transfer, and Barcelona and Xavi have already secured him. That's why the Man United, a, a, a team as big as the Man United, should be doing. They should be going and securing those free transfers early on, or you know, because I mean, players like Mbappe right now, he'll be on a free transfer. I'll be speaking to those players because I can, you know. But I mean, United will always be the team that is wasting time because the owners are trash. They don't really know what they want, you know. So, yeah, man, like as a manager, I literally want to have a one-on-one -on -one with, you know, the right people who know football, you know. Instead of these people who don't know football, they are more focused on business, you know. As much as they are more focused on business, they confuse you at times. They go spend more money on a single player instead of spending that amount of money on two or three players. Because if you're business-minded, it would make more business sense to go get more players for the amount of one. You know, I would, I would, I would walk away from that, that type of uh, setup where I get one player for 75 million or for 100. I literally spend 100 million and get four players. Because, I mean, you can. You, you can go literally go get a player that is 40, a player that is 30, get, you know, you could literally get three or four players for 100. But because the Man United, they're always trying to get one player for 100 or two. That's already waste. Now, man, you made some, some great points, actually, and, and, and in terms of that. And that is my worry, actually. I wanted to actually wanted us to finish off with it because my worry is that um, these guys... You know, it's not a matter of how, how much they were spending. It's how they were spending it. You know, um, if you look at Man City, you know, um, they spend almost similar to what we've spent, but they've been efficient with it. They, when we were getting your Maguires for 80, paying 80 million for Maguire, you know, they were getting Ru uh, Ruben Diaz for, for, for like 60 million, 50 million, 60 million. I mean, I mean you see, that's the difference. They get three players or four players for 100 million. We go and, and buy one player or two players for 100 million. How are we supposed to build a team doing that? Because by the time you get to the next season, you're trying to buy and they go on and buy other players like that. So it's like two, you've, 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 you've essentially signed two or three players or four players. And they, those guys have already almost signed an entire team by the time you even try and, 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 and you know what I'm saying? By the time you spend 200 million, these guys have already have a full team spending 200 million. So for me, um, it's a joke. It's a joke. You know, um, it's, it's, it's all about who, who right now is given that power to spend money efficiently within the club because this wastage of money, like, I mean, come on. These guys are businessmen and they're stingy. How can you be stingy and waste money? How does that work? Like only at this club where, where that's actually insanely possible. Like, they, they, I mean, um, something needs to be done there. And they now maybe might realize that they have to actually have people who are competent. And maybe that's why your likes of Paul Mitchell are being brought in so that they can help, help like change the transfer uh, strategy within the club. Because I can see them try and do something differently because this whole thing, yeah. Uh, wait, are you saying we're actually getting Paul Mitchell or are they still thinking of getting him? Yeah, I think they, 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 um, they're thinking of getting him. They still haven't reached a conclusion, which is annoying. And, you know, it's, it's quite obvious. You need to have someone who's in charge of making footballing decisions. Your, 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 your Murtaugh isn't experienced. You know what I'm saying? He's been... Don't get me wrong. He's been at the club and he, he was one of the guys responsible for all of this mess. So how the hell do you promote someone who's been involved in this whole mess, promote him to a position where you, you want to make changes in? It doesn't make sense. You know, it's, it's jobs for the boys at the club, you know. Um, uh, but then that has to end. That has to come to an end. Now they have to have, they realize that in order for them to survive in a very competitive space, they have to actually have have people who are competent and know what they're doing. 
because they're not going to survive very long. They've got clubs that are catching up to them. So their strategy now has to change. They have to now think, okay, for 100 million, what can we get? You know, if you bring someone like your Paul Mitchell, he'll tell you, drop a list and you will be like, you can get guys like this. Your, your Ralph Regnick also has like um, close ties with, with, with um, various scouts, you know, in various leagues. That's why they, he was able to, you know, get cheap players in for, 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 your, for the likes of um, Red Bull, you know, and, and Leipzig. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, at the end of the day, that's what it all comes to for Man United. If they don't get that right, unfortunately, this this is just going to continue and it's going to be a very long ride to a sad ending of an empire because you can't run a football club like that and expect um, and expect to survive. I mean, even your Jürgen club even gave it up because I remember having this argument with, with United fans in 20, I think it was 20, um, 20, around 2014, 2015, where I was telling them that the club isn't run well, you know, and they were saying, where, do you, where did you get that information? You know how people are. And I'm like, you can see with the decisions that we're making. You know, first and foremost, you've got your guy, uh, you've got a chief executive in, in your, um, Ed Woodward, who's a banker. His, his only previous experience is being a banker, you know, and he's the one who's making footballing decisions. Please help me make that sense. Like, how does that make sense? How do you have a guy like that who has absolutely, who knows absolutely nothing, making footballing decisions within your football club? I've never seen that happen anywhere else except here, you know? And, and then what, what triggered fans to actually see that that's exactly what's happening, you know, the club has not been run well, is when Jurgen Klopp came, when he came to Liverpool, he said the reason why he rejected Man United is because, you know, he, his wife even saw it. They're like, it's, it's, it's a Disney club. He felt it was, it, was, it was like going to Disneyland. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's like visiting Disneyland because that's how much of, of, the, of, the, of clowns these guys are. You know, they could see what was happening. There was no order. There was no structure. There was no nothing. So, you know, it's free for all and it's jobs for the boys. You've got bankers, people who, who used to work behind the desk, you know, investment bankers out there uh, being the ones negotiating, you know, uh, transfer fees. You know what I'm doing? The negotiations and you wonder why our, transfer, our transfers were taking time to go through. You know, you find that teams could sign three players before we even sign one or they could just be done with their whole entire business and we could still be struggling to get one player through. You see what I'm getting at? So, yeah, man. Um, <laughs> yeah, man. Um, just to close off, man. What, what, what would you like to add? Yeah, well, Ish, you know, when it comes to your main United, I look at the last three years, and I look at how excited I'd always get when the new season starts, and then every season ended the same, trophyless disappointments you know even with Ole, like, like like and i'm looking at the three years now because nine years if i count nine years a very long time but i look at the three years and i'm like in this three years looking at all this time we haven't really achieved anything we haven't won a trophy the only thing we've been doing is trying to fight for top four and saying you know we managed to get top top four uh above you know we, we're above chelsea we're above liverpool we're above this doesn't really do anything in the past five years, Chelsea and Liverpool have won trophies. And you see certain Man United fans being excited by the fact that we're above a, a Chelsea, a Liverpool. It doesn't really mean anything. You know, we have nothing to show for it. You know, so it's one of those things where I don't know, like, like it's even confused because I don't really know what us as fans can do. Because, I mean, I know that, there's, that we've had boycotts in the past where... It seemed like uh, they listened, but at the same time, they come back, they revert back to what they've been doing, making football decisions and giving that power to business people, like you've said. You know, I would understand, and I'm not saying that a business person might not know how to run a football club. You know, it would have been different, let's say, a business person who is a Man United fan. That would be slightly different because now... He would know, he or she would know that, okay, as a Man United fan, 
I would like for my team to win. And for my team to win is either I employ the right football people or I make the right decisions, getting the right players. You know, because like you said, we can't be spending 100 million on one player. We should be making sure to spend it at least on three players. You know, that makes, helps us to quickly get the right players in. Because if you look at the Man United right now, and let's say we do get the right manager in right now, the problem would be with our recruitment. There's players we need to get rid of. And if we're able, because a Pogba is leaving, remember, Pogba will, will be leaving on a free. We need to replace Paul Pogba. You know, there's still other players we need to replace. So if we have the right manager and then we have the right football people, like your Ralph, who will say, with 100 million, I'll be able to get you three or four players. Already you, you, you've been able to, to, to get four players. There's already almost half of the players that play in the field. You know, the only thing we'll need to now, you know, I'll literally do that. Get the right players, let's say four, 400 million or maybe 150, get four or five players. And then in the bench, make sure that I have more youth. And when I say I have more youth, uh, instead of having, obviously you need uh, players that can still fit in if one of the, 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 the starters are injured. But at the same time, you need to at least have three of the youth. If you have three, if let's say, like, like this what we should be doing. It will make it easy for the youth to even learn, to even start playing, so that we, we, we start spending less money. I mean, I remember the Barcelona of old. The Barcelona of old didn't usually buy players. Instead, they promoted players. We're speaking about a Messi right now, who has been a revelation for Barcelona. They did not buy him. Instead, they, they just, you know, he was in the development and Pep brought him up and he played. We might have Messi's and Cristiano's in our uh, development, but because of the old crocs that are trash that, who are playing right now, you know, we won't get to see these young players. And that's, that's the one thing that, that, that breaks my heart, really, because you hear about these players, they will tell you about this player, that player, but they don't get to play in, in the first team and show how they can really, you know, play. And then to the point where uh, some of them end up leaving, going to other teams. Uh, some, their football just ends up just uh, finishing without them actually hitting those high notes. You know, so there's a painful part. So I, I really do not know. I, I have the answers, but I'm saying I don't know how to get those answers that I have as one of the fans of Man United to the people in power to actually instill those things. But they won't. Because people, like I said, people boycotted, but nothing was done about that. They didn't really do anything. So it's one of those things where it's like, it's frustrating. And I'm hoping that somehow one day it will change. I don't know if it will change with this owners or when we have new owners. Because look at uh, Newcastle. You mentioned Newcastle. Newcastle bought about four or five players. And those players are the ones that are helping them to stay up. And they have the money. Now, when the season finishes and, and they've stayed up, imagine how many players they, they're going to get because they're going to sell their players. And then after selling, they will literally get another four players. That's almost the whole team. And they've done that in two transfers, not more than that. You know, so a Man United could literally do, because the players that Newcastle have bought, they were not players that are 100 million. Instead, they were able to use 100 million and space it out within uh, between three or four players. And that's what we need to start doing. If we start doing that, then there's hope for Man United. If we don't, then forget about it, man. Forget. We'll, we'll remain being trash. Nah, man. Uh, thanks so much, man, Sims, and um, for joining us and joining me again today. Um, um, yeah, man, it's, it's been a productive show. You know, we, 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 we've just been, you know, laying out everything that we, we we couldn't actually talk about on monday you know, on monday obviously it's a podcast that's we're trying to include every team that, that there is in both english premier league and la liga but you know today it was a man united it's a strictly a united talk you know and yeah man you guys make sure you like and share the video and me and sims are finally retiring for the week i think okay i'm not retiring for the week i think i might have a show tomorrow yeah, so I'm I'm not gonna rest. Um, but Sims, man, thanks a lot, man, once again.
Yeah, that was sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, 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 thanks for having me again, man. And uh, yeah, it was a productive show. We got to vent because I feel like we're a Man United, as a Man United fan, at times we just need to vent with the trash we've been experiencing. So yeah, great show, man. Thanks for, for having me. And uh, yeah, next time, man. Now, nah, next time, my brother. Uh, Monday, our podcast next week. Um, catch us there. We'll, we'll, we'll be covering international games, and there'll be good international games that are coming through. Portugal, will they, you know, fail to qualify for the, for the World Cup next week? Is it next week, ne? Is it? Portugal is playing tomorrow against Turkey. Tomorrow. Yeah, Sky is not yeah, going to show that game. Uh, uh, but I'm sure, man, somewhere Super Sport will show us. But yeah, yeah, but I'm hoping that they win because hey, it'll be one crazy World Cup without one of the greatest players in the world. <laughs> Now, awesome stuff, man. And yeah, guys, have a lovely evening and we will see you guys next week. For me, I will see you guys tomorrow. Take care, guys. Happy to be back home after 12 years. Good game, man. A really good game. Like I said to Martinelli. Hello, Antonio. Nice to see you again. Hello. Good afternoon. Good. It's gone through La Porte. Rodri! Lisa Lewandowski auftritt sorgt für Wirbel. Looks like you lost the number one.